it's everybody welcome back to the channel we're about to we're about to head off on a trip to the most northwesterly point of Tenerife which is Buena Vista del North but before we do we're about to have breakfast in a Deje town and look at this one of the most unique looking lattes I've seen Mm, delicious. That's a unique way to serve it. Bagel lattes, one hour directly north through the mountains we're about to head. So we'll gorge these down and then, well, we don't really know what to expect. I'm not sure if we've ever been to this point. If, um, we have, Monica says. Okay, maybe we have. One hour directly north from here, but it's in that little corner of northwest Tenerife where there's no motorway connecting. I think they're working on connecting it, but that final northwestern bit of the island, there's still no motorway. So it's gonna be a lot of twists and turns going through the mountain ranges. Should be a great ride. I just hope, just hope the weather holds out because it's so often the case in Tenerife, you leave beautiful sunshine and then you get just a little bit inland and it does get a bit more cloudy. So. We'll just leave it up to the weather gods. We have no idea what it's going to be like, but it should be a very good road trip. Just a nice little lunch. Could not help myself. I think it's healthy because it's got fruit. <laughs> Wrap it up. So this is, these are actually carrot pancakes with fruits, bit of butter, maple syrup, I think that is. And when you've got when you've got a long road trip or a long trip coming up, got to make sure you're full. Otherwise, I'll get there. I'll be one hour into the ride, top of the mountains in a foul temper because I'm so hungry. If there's exploring to be done, you've got to do it on a full stomach. We're almost completely bang in the middle of Tenerife now and I've made a huge mistake again. I am absolutely freezing because I've gone out in my summer gear and if I'm not gonna learn there are, there are micro climates in Tenerife then I deserve to be cold. So it's, I say cold, it's probably about 16 or 17 degrees and I've got so soft now I actually class that as cold. The next time it's winter gear if we're going through Tenerife. But look at the scenery, it's so lush. Brambles, blackberry bushes and everything, just like you get in England. It's so different here. We're about half an hour away. And hopefully by the time we get down to sea level, it should be back to about 23 degrees, but we're getting there. We saw actually Monica and I rode past. There was a couple on a rental scooter. Clearly they were tourists and they were both in shorts and t-shirts. Probably rented it from Costa de and the touristy bit thought everywhere is going to be 24 degrees. Oh, they're in for a shock. Well, we're still very high, well, high above sea level. It's still freezing. The wind is galing around here. It is, I don't even know if that's proper term galing. It's 
blustery up here and I'm just hoping by the time we get down here it will have warmed up. I think it will because it's a lot clearer closer to the coast. This is here, I love this, completely, completely, pretty much 100% non-touristy here. And look at all of these developments here. And this, this is what the roads are like when you don't have the motorway connecting this northwest part of the island. They are building the roads, so within a few years, this almost won't be needed for the majority of people when you've got the whole motorway around all of the island. But Look at these little towns and villages around here. And zoom in, Monica, if you can see that. To that road down there. Look at it, snaking like that. I mean, you think when you see these types of roads, they were probably some of the, the absolute first roads in this northwestern bit, because it's really way, way worse connected than pretty much everywhere else we've been to on the island along the outskirts of the island around here. And this is what the traditional little, well, probably, what do we think, 1970s, 1980s Canarian houses are like, all very square, lots of different colours, and fairly simply designed in reality, with quite a lot of farming going on as well. This road's almost ridiculously dramatic. I'm so pleased that I changed the brake fluid in the bike after the Masca video where I had 100% brake fade because it's so steep. We've come from all the way up there. We're going all the way down there to where it's completely flat. And look at that. I think, I think this is all banana plantations here just spreading the whole way along the flat bit of coast. And actually here, gives you a brilliant idea before the motorway was built in Tenerife. You know, th these were probably the only roads to get around to different bits of the island before they had all this, you know, I don't know, budget and incredible machinery to just tunnel through bits of the, the cliffside and mountainside and stuff. You'd have these winding roads that take forever to get anywhere. And that here, somehow, you've got all of these houses along. I can't believe there are actually houses along this bit of road. It's incredible. One abandoned one right there. Where? Just there. Palm trees on the side. And then these, as far as I can tell, these two are completely abandoned. The path up to them is overgrown. Monica, pass the camera. Let me see if there's anything interesting. Okay, right. So this would have been, I'm guessing, the old driveway to get up here. Clearly no cars have been here for years. And here, here's one of the paths to get to one of the houses. Whew. But out of breath and then Wow, there's one of the houses and this one is completely overgrown. Here's the broken old fence and you can see ivy growing on the front door, smashed window and a tree right next to it. And then this would have been the view, or well, this is the view. So little farming area here where they could grow their, their different trees. And that's the view they'd have with the dramatic cliffs right there. But I don't think anyone's lived in here for a very long time.
And then this house, which is in much better condition, just to the side of it. I can imagine with these types of houses on these incredibly steep cliffs, you know, if they were built 30 years ago or so, family dies out maybe for example or moves to somewhere where the work is it's it's very very hard to sell a house like this so i can understand why some houses just get abandoned really the owners would have no choice access incredibly difficult uh, if you're above a certain age it's hard even walking into them so they just get left and nature takes them back Welcome to Buena Vista del Norte. It's a, as far as I can tell, 16th and 17th century town, and they are extremely proud here of their traditional architecture and also maintaining and restoring that architecture when necessary. And it's true, it probably does have on the higher side of traditional buildings that we've seen so far in Tenerife. And you don't get many of these actually, but in a, a kind of town centre here, first thing we see when we get to the square is this kind of old building we don't know how old it is but it needed some renovation but there's some beautifully restored places here also one thing it's so quiet it really does feel like i mean for one there's no motorway here so you have to go all the way down that winding road that i'm sure monica filmed some of and it feels like you're going back in time here lots of this really nice old architect architecture and the church i don't think you can see it here but there's a church right behind here. I'm sure we'll show it. I think it's 16th century, that church. And just look at this. This is an old bar here, beautifully restored with the terrace just above it there and a little barbecue in the corner of the terrace. As is often the case, just really nice on these restored buildings, the wooden uh, Juliet balconies there with the iron railings going across. It's a lovely little place, but not touristy at all it's, it's was that funny no it's not touristy at all actually it's really nice it's not somewhere that was top of our list to go purely because it's not somewhere that always pops up on the the places to visit in Tenerife but I'm really excited to have a wander around here oh you can feel the sun burning through the clouds it's just so funny to think 10 minutes ago it was unpleasantly cold And that's perfect timing. Cool. <laughs> so that is one hour's riding with that going like that and no way to tighten it. Nice. <sighs> Just 
Almost everything, look at these old doors, so simple and so original. What a place, and you've got the wooden shutters on the inside. Just a little bit of that, what do you call it? That white lattice kind of material there inside. The old number five there and then a new one on top. It's a bit like a scene from a Western or something, these simple buildings and then the wooden doors right on the street front. Isn't it? But so much of Tenerife, this is what we always say, so much of Tenerife's clean, especially where we're from, South East London, everywhere is filthy, litter everywhere, graffiti everywhere, but God, the Spanish, they take such good care of their surroundings. There are always people in the street, cleaning, sweeping, hosing down the streets, everywhere is clean. Mm, they take, a, they, they spend a lot of money to keep the place good in Spain. I know I've been talking about cars too much when Monica says, look at that old 205. Never, Monica would never have known that before. This car always evaded me. I came so close to owning one of these so many times. 1.6 GTX. Ah, it's a simple 205, isn't it? And I absolutely love it. They're good cars, those, and they still look great. Big fan. This is exactly the same as Icod de los Vinos, isn't it? The raised central courtyard here with that exact style building in the middle. It's almost like I've had a bit of deja vu here. It's exactly the same. Weirdly so. I mean, it's beautiful. That's so funny. Church right in the heart, raised courtyard area, cafe. Cafe in the middle with lots of trees surrounding it and then this really nice old kind of colonial architecture around it. Clearly a theme of the older towns because this is 16th century and I think Ico de los Vinos, if I remember, I think it's 15th century uh, and it's clearly a theme of these older towns. So we'll probably actually see a few wooden balconies. It's a really beautiful town. Where is everybody? Literally, Monica and I were saying there are a few tourists dotted around the place, but it is a bit like a ghost town here. There's a coffee shop over there with a couple in there. Oh, it's, it's quiet, really quiet, almost weirdly so. Is this what is this opal voxel abconner i've never heard ascona ascona what was this in the uk someone let me know what was this called in the uk i don't know if i've ever seen one i've just realized oh my god this is a coupe Oh, what's this? Opel Ascona two litre coupe. <laughs> Late eighties, never seen one in my life. Beautiful sporty interior. Let me know, let me know about this car. I, it must have come under, under a different name in the UK. Opel Ascona. That must be mind-blowingly rare to have this in coupe format. Mind-blowingly rare. I know nothing about these. It's just noticed a cat and suddenly she's got a huge interest in the car.
just us and the dogs here. This one has been making sure the other dogs are okay in the town, just wandering around. Knocked on a door to try and get in earlier, no one answered, so he's headed off again. Started the day off over a coffee and we'll finish it there. And apologies if you can see about a hundred flies around me. There are loads of flies here for some reason and I've given up trying to shoo them away. So I just let them sit on my shoulder, my head, my, my cake, everything. They just let them do their thing. Um, if you're coming to the northwest of Tenerife, because there's no motorway, for one it means, sorry, you'll see Monica's hand just there swooshing them away. You, you, it's actually brilliant for biking because you're forced to take these brilliant mountainous roads. You're forced to take, I can see Monica looking so nervous. Um, so it's great for biking. And it's also a really nice way to see the, what you'd imagine is a traditional, characterful, old, like Spanish towns. They're, they're really, really nice. And it's a much, much sleepier way of life here. And it's really nice to see it. So we highly recommend it as a day out and we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming along with us today. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.